Does that help You want that anointing. You want that anointing of humility. Share it with us. Amen. God bless. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Before I gave my life to Christ on March 16, 1981, I hate people that are proud. I was a sinner, yet I hate pride. Hallelujah. Amen. I do not pray that I don't want to sin, but what I pray to God for is that God, please make me humble. I say sinner. And when I'm going to school, when I see people that are proud, I, you know, I, I feel so disgusted as a sinner. It's not that I'm better than them, we are all sinners. But <laughs> when I see those that are proud, I feel disgusted. Especially when I see those in leadership. And I remember when I used to pray those days as a Roman Catholic uh, church goer, I would say, God, you must punish this man, call it there, me. He's too proud. <laughs> 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. And I will be praying, God, please make me humble. Yeah. But God gave me something more than that. Because when I have that, I will have humility. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Humility personified. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The greatest adventures in this life, which is enduring satisfaction as people term it to be, is not the exotic safari or booming business successes or love relationship with perfect with that perfect man or woman, but rather it is discovering and pursuing God's perfect will and purpose for one's life. Amen. That is the greatest adventure. I was listening to my son who was invited to come and preach in one of the campuses in Boston where he was working. And he was saying that there is a king called Solomon, the richest man in his time. He has money, he has 300 wives and 700 concubines. 1,000. He has, they don't use cars, they use chariots. He has the best chariots among kings in this world. He has many of them. This man, after living all this high, high, falutin life, he came when God came to speak to him, God's spirit. He said, all this thing is vanity. Mm -hmm. Vanity upon vanity, mm -hmm. all is vanity. Is vanity. Mm -hmm. Then he came to realize that the best thing, by that time he was old, and he started speaking to those who are young. He said, remember God in the days of your youth. Because he put himself that I wish I can go back when I'm, I'll be like you. Youths, I will have ordered my priorities aright. Amen. God's perfect will for mankind is that any man or woman, boy or girl, that should repent of one's sins and return to Him in, his, in humility and repentance. There is a scripture that God first of all ministered to me that made me to see. And we will read it in Isaiah chapter 57, verse 15. Isaiah 57, verse 15. Like my daddy, honestly, one of the, um, before I met daddy, a pastor friend of mine, one of our branches in Accra, 
He pastors our branch in Takrade in Ghana. He was telling me about daddy. He says, sir, when you are going to North Carolina, I said, yes. He said, ah, you must meet this man of God. He was my daddy. He said, and he was telling me about him. I said, oh, I want to. And he said, when you meet him, sir, since I used to tell him, I said, honestly, I, go to, I like going to church that talks about heaven, that makes my heart to go to heaven, that makes me to be heavenly focused. Mm -hmm. And I said, sir, he is the one I should. Amen. And honestly, I thank God I am the member of your day, of this church. Amen. I thank God I'm associated with that name. Amen. Amen. I'm sure you bear the witness. Oh, yes. It makes you to be heavenly focused. Yes. Honestly speaking, any church you go, that they are talking about prosperity, they are not talking about heaven. Amen. Run away! Amen. Run, run. Amen. For your life. <laughs> it is to receive Jesus Christ into one's life. Isaiah 57, verse 15. It says, and I read, For this is what the eye and exalted one says. And we want somebody to read it for me from New King James. Maybe our brother. God bless you. But uh, let me, after I finish reading it, you will read it from there. He said, for this is what the eye and the exalted one, that is the most eye. This is what he says. Listen to what he's saying. He said, he who lives forever, whose name is holy. I live in the high and holy place, but also with the one who is contrite and lowly in the spirit. Mm. To revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. My brother, please read it for us. Thank you. And if you have any other version, I want to read as many versions as possible. King James. King James, yes. Isaiah 57, verse 15. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabited eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place, with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble, and to revive the, the heart of the contrite ones. Amen. Amen. Honestly speaking, when God revealed these things to me, He says, Son, every day of your life, as I have given you and this beautiful cloth called humility, we will still see it. Humility is an attitude of the heart and it's a garment of the spirit. Mm -hmm. As children of God, Holy Spirit made me to realize that we have so many garments. We have garments of salvation, garments of righteousness, garments of praise, and one of the garments we have also is called garments of humility. He said, when you put it on and you appear before me and you go on your knees, always, because the Bible says that if we say we have no sin, we make God a liar, and God is not a liar. And you repent of your sins. Before we started, you know, that is the prayer that Daddy led us. Somebody that is humble <coughs> and that is of a contrite heart, God said, I dwell with that person. Mm -hmm. You understand? God was listening to two people who were praying in Jerusalem, in the synagogue. One was praying, Oh God, have mercy on me. I just stole somebody's money because I was hungry. I just raped somebody. And I, because I was I needed money, I just shot a man and killed him. Ah, I'm doomed for hell, but please just have mercy on me, God. Another person was praying. You see, Kadibu is even dressing. <laughs> so. hmm? look, look at him like Rasta. Yeah. But I know that I'm not like that. <laughs> I fast, I pray, I pay my tithes. You know, you know that I will pay your word. 
I do this. The Bible says, the Lord Jesus Christ was the one saying this, so not me. The Bible, the Lord Jesus Christ said, the man that was beating his chest and crying for his sins, go home with his answer, his prayers answered, mm -hmm. than this one. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Another time, the Lord Jesus Christ said, and he was using himself, he said he has 100 sheep. One of the sheep went astray. He said he left the 99 righteous one, mm -hmm. and he went after the one that went astray. Mm. That is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Most High himself, talking. So I told God, I said, Lord, you know that even before I received you, I always pray that you make me humble. And I know you answered that my prayer. Yes. Lord, always make me humble. Always make me to remember where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yes. I said today, oh Lord, you have blessed me. Is it financially? Is it about my children? I must give my testimonies here concerning my three children. How you are blessed. I said, God, I can't remember when I was asking God for money. I asked him, but I can't remember my last. Because I just tell God, just allow me to just live a day at a time, one day, sweet Jesus. And like Daddy said, every day, and this morning, still, as I was waking up, I was just offering him thanksgiving. Because many people slept yesterday. Some did not wake up. They died in their sleep. I don't know whether I'm giving my testimony here. It was when I was going to be killed in my sleep that I encountered Christ. Mm. Mm. On the 16th of Mar March, 1981. And honestly speaking, brethren, I just want us to, you, there are some prayers that we are going to pray using the word of God to ask God for humility. It is a virtue that God desire. It is a garment that Holy Spirit puts on us. Amen. And as I was preparing this message, Holy Spirit made me to realize what one man of God called W.F. Komei, I don't know how many of us know about deeper life, is here. And he said, the Holy Spirit always come to abide on a sheep. You know, when we give our life to Christ, we become a sheep. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit was telling me that before we give our life to Christ, we, each one of us, take different forms of animal. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Well, you can imagine people like me that used to run after women before I gave my life to Christ. I see myself as a dog. You understand? <laughs> no, no. I mean, I, I like being frank with God. Amen. And you can see, you can imagine the one that is always backbiting behind. And you can see that one as a scorpion. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And you can see the ones that when they stab you at the back or they, they are even ready to put poison in your food, those ones are like what? Serpent. You know, different, we all have, mm -hmm. we all manifest different things. Yeah. But when we come to Christ, he changed that Amen. Evil, Amen. and we become a sheep mm -hmm. because Amen. he is the shepherd. Amen. And when we give our life to Christ, the Holy Spirit comes to, you know, the Bible says the seal of our inheritance. He comes to seal us. Mm. So the Holy Spirit is always on a sheep, not on a goat mm. or any other kind of animals. And no wonder he takes the, the shape of a dove or a shepherd, mm. a, an eagle, that, that dimension. And he goes. But for us, we must first of all give our life to Jesus before the Holy Spirit can come. And he's the one that will make our hearts to be humble. Mm. Amen. We is the one that we need to crave. With the word of the Lord, honestly speaking, I'm going to tell you about the opposite. The opposite of being humble is being proud. I'll just mention one or two scriptures in Proverbs and then we will see. Hallelujah. Amen. And what, the one that actually made me to be fearful was that the Bible said God resists the proud. The proud. <laughs> May God never resist you in this life. Because if God resists a man, that man is finished. You understand? You can resist me, you know, as 
a, as a person, but how about if God resists somebody? I think it was in the book of, uh, one of the book of the Old Testament that God was speaking there. He said, God was as you're resisting there. You put your money in your pocket, it will develop a rule, it will go. <laughs> All your thing. where God started? Agar. Agar, yeah. Agar. Chapter 1. And you see, it's a terrible thing when God starts fighting a man. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want us to quickly see another uh, scripture. The second scripture we are going to read is in Matthew chapter 12. We want to now study about the humility personified in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Matthew chapter 12, verse 18. If you see it, quickly just read. You know, Daddy has said that I, I would, I, if I were the one preaching, I would finish quickly. So I want to finish quickly. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Matthew chapter 12, verse 18. Yes, ma'am. Behold my servant, whom I have chosen, mm -hmm. my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. Mm -hmm. I will put my spirit unto him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. Amen. That is our Lord Jesus Christ. The one God loves, the one God delights him. The one that humbled himself unto death. Matthew 17, verses 5 and 6. Matthew 17, 5 and 6. I'll just quickly read because I found it before you. <laughs> While he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them. This was Mount of Transfiguration. And a voice from the cloud said, This is my son. <laughs> whom I loved. With him, I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell down to the ground, terrified. You see, there is something about humility. He brings God to showcase you to the world. Amen. At my 68th birthday, that daddy mentioned, which was last month. Honestly speaking, when my children started talking, daddy and mommy, they were there. I've been praying to God for each and every one there. For their, right from the day they were conceived for their salvation. And we quickly led them to Christ at young age. And I told them that they should be looking at us and their mom and learn. We are their best friend mm. before they have friends outside. Amen. And they should always share with us. Mm -hmm. I was surprised. Daddy and mommy can bear me witness and my wife. <coughs> when they were saying, honestly speaking, my daddy, <coughs> one of the things that struck me about him is his humility. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I almost went into tears. I just said, thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. I pray that these children to be like that, mm. that they will follow me as I follow Christ mm. Amen. in humility Amen. and righteousness. He said, because and it, when, they were, when I beat them, I will go to them and say, do you know why I beat you? This is because of this and this one that you have done. I said, but you know what? Honestly, I don't feel like beating you. I don't want to beat you. I'm so sorry. You know, that was my, my only son, the last one. That was the day he did something very bad. And I just removed my belt and I beat him. By the time I finished beating him, I went upstairs. When I was upstairs, the Holy Spirit told me, you are over beating him. Mm. What has he done? Go down to him and apologize. Mm. I said, yes, Lord. And I just went down and I called him someone. And we went into the inner smaller room. I said, Samuel, I'm, I'm so sorry. The black is still on his body. He was still crying. I said, please, I'm so sorry. And I just walked it close to my son. I said, I'm so sorry. The Holy Spirit told me that I've over beaten you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> 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 and the boys started crying. I told you, we just started crying on one another show. <laughs> Honestly. 
And I said, honestly speaking, I will never again, never again beat you like this because God has rebuked me. Mm. Amen. Brethren, it is, it is important to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is important for us to give our hearts completely to the Lord and be like Jesus and Jesus alone. Mm. Jesus said his need is to do the Father's will mm. and to finish his work. That should be our need also. Mm. So be so humble because it is in the perfect will of God. Amen. Mm. God said, He will dwell he that dwelleth in the highest. He also comes to dwell with the humble. Mm. And we call that his contract. That is God. And what God does to those who are who are proud, He avoid them, He resists them, He looks down on them, He far from them. Honestly. In the medical school, you know. Medical school can be very, very proud. You know that. When we finish our final exam, and I we went to look at our, our results, one of my friends, when he saw, he said, hey, I'm a doctor, I'm a doctor. And he just carried a beer, and he started pouring, I'm a doctor. I look at him like this. What sort of celebration is this? When I saw my name, among those that have become daughters, I just went to my room and I just knelt down. Holy Spirit is my witness. Brethren, I tell you the truth, I lie not. And I just started thanking God. Amen. And I said, God, now that you have made me a doctor, please make me a doctor for Jesus Christ. Amen. That in my practice, my patients will see Christ first in me. And I thank God that God answers that prayer. Amen. That some of my patients, even a poor farmer, brought his goods, uh, a basket full of eggs and everything to me, said, I've never seen a doctor mm. Mm. that is so compassionate and so listening and humble. Mm. He was telling that. Amen. And he brought this. Uh, I said, Thank you, Papa. He said, but if I eat this, you will send me to Holy Grave. <laughs> and he asked children, I said, these children, this thing will be good for them. They need the protein. I said, no. I said, ah, Papa, I beg. I beg you. He said, no, OK. Honestly, <laughs> so I have to take just more. You better to satisfy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. In Amen. everything that we do, let us take allow Jesus Christ to be portrayed. Mm. People to see him right. and to glorify him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And one of the things, one of the clothes that they will easily see in you that we attract them. Honestly, it's not even praise. Garments of praise is good. But that is when you are with God in your corner, in your church. But when you are outside there, the, the garments that we easily attract them is the garments of humility. Amen. Amen. The garments of compassion. Do you understand? That attitude that Jesus Christ, though very high, he did not count it to be anything, to be equal with God, but he humbled himself and became as a man. God in human form. Hallelujah. In fact, that is what we are just about to read. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 11. And somebody to quickly open to 1 Peter 5, 5 to 7. Philippians 2, verses 5 to 11. If you see it, just quickly read. Philippians 2, 5 to 11. Yes, please. Let this mind be in you, mm -hmm. which was also in Christ Jesus. Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Upon him, the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, 
he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So that is, you know, the character that our Lord Jesus Christ manifested. That so much touched his father. And he said, I can imagine, he said, I come in the volume of the book that is written of me. I believe in one of those things written of the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven before he came is that God told him, <coughs> tell them that you this life, I have the power over it to lay it down and I have the power over it to take it back. Mm -hmm. Among the things written of him and he was telling us this. You understand? Because of his humility. Mm -hmm. He chose, he said, oh, maybe Holy Spirit said, I can took up the flesh, Holy Spirit, how we go? Father, how we go? You understand me? Honestly speaking, there was a brother. He's going, to, he's going to be with the Lord now. They went for a picnic and his sister was drowning. And the girl, the sister with all, please help me. And nobody said, and the brother said, I can swim. And he just went in to bring, my wife knows this person we are talking about, is one of the children of, our, the president of our full gospel business friend fellowship back in Accra. And the boy went in, tried to push the sister out, and I don't know what happened, that just caught him in his feet, and he went down. Hmm. That we will love one another so much that I should be ready to give my life hmm. to my sister. Amen. Do you understand? We watch over one another. I, I esteem you more than myself. That is what Philippians was even telling us. You know, the earlier verses in chapter 2. And this is the attitude that is between the father and the son. You will hear the son will say, I can do nothing without the father. Mm. The father will say, listen to my son. Mm. And the father and the son will say to the Holy, concerning the Holy Spirit, he said, do not grieve my spirit. Mm -hmm. You understand? Watching over themselves, guiding themselves, and this is how we are supposed to do. We are supposed to be one in one body. Mm -hmm. And honestly speaking, what will facilitate that interaction between us is humility. Mm -hmm. Esteeming one another more than ourselves. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So to quickly, um, I will, First Peter chapter 5, verses 5 and 7. First Peter 5, verses 5 and 7. I will read. In the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to the elders. All of you, clothe yourselves with humility towards one another. Because God opposes or resists the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Amen? Amen. Humble yourself. Not to me, not to pastor, but to God. Mm -hmm. Under God's mighty hand. And God that sees in secret, he will reward you in the hope of me. The Bible says that when the disciples heard the voice of the Lord on the mountain, they fell down before the Lord Jesus Christ, terrified. Honestly speaking, it is not only a garment, it is something that by which God will showcase you to the world and will make people, you might just be walking and you just see somebody screaming, what are you, leave us, leave, leave this, what? just because of that's inward clothing. That's inward beauty before God. The people on the other side, they see if you don't know. 
those in the kingdom of darkness. The seers, there was one in the medical school, we were saying that, and he came to meet me, he said, there is something always shining on your face. Mm. Anytime you are walking, I said, that is Jesus. Amen. That is his name. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. This guy that said this, on the Holy Spirit sent, he sent me that I should go and minister to him. I said, where will I see this guy? Okay, I just went on my way. Holy Spirit, just take me to him, wherever he is. And I was going to read, and I saw him drinking beer with two girls and another medical student. This was on a Saturday night. I was going to read, and I wanted to buy things where they were drinking beer. And Holy Spirit said, that is him. Tonight, you must pray to him. I said, God, there are two men there. He said, the one that shall remain. So I was waiting. The next thing is that I had the boy said, look, me, I'm going to, when it's time for the party, you guys come and pick me up. Okay? He said, yes. They, and then I realized that the two ladies were from School of Nursing. So no, they, the two of them said, look, oh, please, we want to go. Come and pick us from the School of Nursing. Oh, we'll be waiting. Oh. So they left. So he remained the boy. He was drinking his bed. And I said, oh, so he's the one. And I now remember that he was the one that told me, you always see something shining on my face. And that was how I started talking to him. He said, oh, you are next to you. Have you read the seven books of Moses? I said, it's a demonic book. I don't read it. I read the five books of Moses. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <Amen. laughs> you know, I said, I read Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Mm -hmm. That's what I read. And by the time, he said, have you been to Egypt, the tomb of blood? I've been there. I get out of my body. Do you go out of your body? I say, I don't need it because Christ is there. Why do I, am I going to do? <laughs> <laughs> to cut the long story short, that is how Holy Spirit made me to start minister to this boy. He said, look, they are around. I said, with that, started mentioning that Orioles, Ario, this. I said, don't worry. I surround you and me with the blood of Jesus and I cut yes. them off. Amen. I said, can you see them? He said, I can't see them. Mm. That night, I saw sir, I saw the Spirit just manifesting. Mm. Mm. As that because it was the same year I gave my life to Christ. This was 1981. It will be around, probably around July or August or so. And Holy Spirit said, put your hand here. He has a third eye. By the time I put my hand, when I was praying, he said, my eye, my eye, my eye, my eye. Mm. Honestly. Holy Spirit said, that ring that he's taking, it was given to him under the sea. And I said, and the bangle, I said, I have to remove this. He said, no, 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 no. It belongs to me and my wife. I said, with your wife? He said, under the sea. Oh, oh. And this was what the Holy Spirit to be within me. And he was saying it, confirming it. Mm. It was, it was brethren. Mm. Anyway, what, what, why am I saying this? God will use you more than that as you convert the nature of the lamb and of the sheep, mm. Mm. which is humility mm. with holiness. Mm. The more you move closer to God, the more he move closer to you. Yeah. Much more, when you have a contrite heart, you live a contrite in your daily life and a humble life every day. I'm telling you, God will move closer to you, and God will be the one showcasing you. Amen. 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 God will never, never joke with people that are humble. I yeah. want you to know that. Mm. And he's the one that fights for the poor mm. and the oppressed mm. because they are so dear to him. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Brethren, I pray that you will covet humility of the Holy Spirit. I pray that the Lord will put that garment on each and every one of us. We will count our life as nothing. We will only say, by grace I am what I am. Mm, mm, mm. You understand? Amen. I, I, I was telling my wife, I said, my mother has three children. By the time we lost our daddy, everything just went down because I'm the breadwinner. Mm. And I said, when I look back, am I the one that owned a house mm. near the presidential palace in Ghana, in wow. Accra? Am I the one that owns this, that owns that? When Lord, hi, my senior brother, my junior brother, and my mom, we were all living in one room. Mm. You brought me out from the marriage.
any place. Yes. You set my feet upon the rock to oh, sing. Yes. Amen. You give me a song to sing. A song of praise. Hallelujah to Jesus. Yes. That is the one that can change, that change people's lives. And when your life is changed, please always remember where it's bringing you. Amen. So Amen. that you will continue to be humble. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's quickly see pride. Horrible, horrible, horrible. It is also a garment, but a garment put on by on by Satan. Look at the Bible says God is pride. My brother, please read James chapter 4, verse 6. And I will read Proverbs 18, 8, verse 13. There are so many scriptures in Proverbs. But because of time, I will only just read Proverbs 8, verse 13. The Bible says, To fear the Lord is to hate evil. And God said, I hate pride and arrogance. Evil behavior and perverse speech. Do I hate? That is our father saying that. And when God hates something, please, you better hate it. When you hate what God hates, and you like what God likes, that is what is called holiness. Do you understand? When you hate what God hates, and you like what God likes, that is holiness. Do you understand? When God says that, I love righteousness, and you said, Lord, please make me righteous. Jesus, you have made Jesus my righteousness. Let this righteousness be practicalized and be seen in me. God answers that prayer. Do you understand? And for adventure, you fall into sin. You see that that is our righteousness. You say, God, this is what you hate. This is what I've done. Remember contrite hearts. You go. God loves somebody that is of contrite hearts and is a humble spirit. Please read for us. Huh? James chapter 4. Yes. In verse 6. Yes. But he giveth more grace. Yeah. Wherefore, he said, God resisteth the proud, yeah. but giveth grace unto the humble. Amen. 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 That is what we have read in First Peter chapter 5, verse 5 also. So, and in Proverbs 16, 18, the Bible says, pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Pride escorts. It takes the lead, and destruction is following. So when you see somebody that is proud, honestly, just know that the downfall of that man is around the corner, mm -hmm. or that woman. Mm -hmm. And Proverbs 29, verse 33 says, A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. I will close by giving you a testimony that happened back in Ghana when I was still working for World Health Organization. There is this colleague of mine, he is so proud. He's been there before me. I came to meet him and I gave him some tracts and I started witnessing to him about Christ. I find out that he's very religious. Every Friday, and it is usually after he has done something bad that he will start singing all sorts of choruses. <laughs> Honestly speaking. And there was this day, he said, he did something to me that was very, very annoying. He expected me to, you know, natural, instinct, naturally to flare up. And I just, I just said, Stanley, God bless you. I still love you. So what is it? Come on, don't do, 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 do nonsense. It, 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 it's a lie. And I said, Stanley, honestly, I tell you the truth. I still love you. Mm -hmm. There was another day. 
After that, he did, and luckily that day, another third person was in the office. And he just started shouting, you are stupid, what's wrong with you? I said, we were discussing this and I'm saying this. He said, shut up, what's wrong with you? Eh? That, you is it because you're a doctor? He, he is not a doctor, medical doctor, by the way. I said, I said please understand me. What is a doctor? And what is not a doctor? I said, stand me. He says, shut up. Well, I said, okay, I'm shut up. The guy that was sitting beside me said, I stand me. The way you are talking to a doctor is not good. Is it because he's a doctor? He was saying that again. Before I knew it, he did something. He said, he, he has already, I was supposed to go to somewhere where the Padia per night was small. You know, and he was supposed to go to the one that is the most, you know, the highest by the end. Guess what he did? He went and wrote, when I wasn't in the office, sent the letter to the boss, the boss approved it, and he sent me to somewhere that the by the end was very, very low, that is Volta region. Mm -hmm. And by the time I came back, I said, ah, what is this, Stanley? I thought we have discussed about this, how we are going to arrange, where places to go. He said, well, I've done it. I said, Stanley, don't be wicked in your hearts. I said, do you know what? I will stay in Accra, because the office is in Accra. When you stay in Accra, you don't get any party. I said, I don't mind. I will stay in Accra. If I don't get any money, I will stay here and do the monitoring and supervision here. So I went, I said, he said, well, the boss has already said, I will tell the boss. When I was speaking to him, the boss walking, is a white man from Canada. Dr. Cartes, he said there is an outbreak of yellow fever in Obuasi. Stanley put himself to Kumasi. Obuasi and Kumasi get the same. They get the same by DM sir. He said, and the Ministry of Health, Director of Public Health, has already said that he wanted Dr. Ahobe to join the national team to go and carry out the outbreak investigation. And they are going to be there for two weeks. And what he was going to do, he is going to be there for five days. In Kumasi. And when the boss left, I said, Stanley, that is my God. Amen. Amen. He had just shown you. Can he, I didn't even know that it would be so sweet. I said, God, you are wonderful. Amen. I was in Ubuasi for two weeks, collecting the same padiem every day that he was collecting because it was the padiem there was about $250 a night. And he only collected for five days. I collected for two weeks. Amen. Amen. <laughs> God resists the proud. Amen. Yes. And He gives grace to the humble. He lifts up the humble. Amen. Honestly speaking, shall we pray? I want you to pray. Mm. Mm. Oh, prepare. Thank you.